Hello everyone, welcome to Unit 1, Lesson 7 of Computer Science Principles, where today we're going to be talking about lossy compression. So last lesson we spoke about lossless compression, where we had um, we compressed data and we were able to rebuild the initial piece of data um, by decompressing the, the original, uh, the, the compressed file. Today we're going to be talking about lossy compression, we, where same kind of concept, we're compressing data and then when we decompress it, um, you know, we're compressing data to save space and then we're, it allows us to decompress it afterwards. With lossy compression though, as the name suggests, we are actually losing part of the data within the, uh, you know, when we do the compression, we've lost some of the data that we, that we can't get back. We cannot decompress the file back to its original state. And, you know, it has some very specific use cases and some very useful use cases. Uh, and that's one of the things we're going to talk about during today's lesson. Uh, for today's lesson, let's shoot back over to um, Google Classroom here. Uh, we have the PowerPoint presentation that I'll be presenting. We have our Lossy Text Compression app. And we have our link to the activities that we're going to be carrying out in code.org today. So those are the materials that you need for today's lesson. So, warm up. Here's a prompt. How is this widget, and we're going to take a look at what this widget is in a second. So how is this widget similar to the widget we used in the previous lesson? And how is it different? So let's go take a look at the widget. And this is the lossy text compression widget that you can find in Google Classroom here. So let's go take a look. So this is our lossy text compression. Uh, original box at the top. I have a theory that if you keep the first letters of every word and then remove all the vowels, that the text is still readable by a person. Is that true? And then our second box here, which we can assume that what they have done is removed. Well, they've kept the first letter of every word and removed the vowels from every one of those words. So you know, you can read the second you can probably guess in the second well actually if we hide hide the top box so you know, don't look at the top box here just look at the bottom box and see if you can figure out what the original sentence used to be um, so you might be able to figure it out I mean the VWLS if you didn't know we'd removed all the vowels the VWLS I'm not sure whether I'd get that get what that was of oh, this one as well readable I think I'd probably not understand that one either um, so the idea is here uh, we have lost some 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 of the data here so we we haven't been given dictionary here so we haven't replaced the vowels you know we've removed the vowels here we have not replaced the vowels with any um, replacement character uh, the vowels have just been removed. We have no dictionary, so all we've got left with is is a uh, part of the data. So we don't we're not able to read the entire. Um, we're not able to decrypt the entire message because half the data is missing. So going back to our question here, so how is this widget similar to the widget we used yesterday? Well, it is removing. Um, specified data so the previous um, app we looked at we were able to specify which data we wanted to remove and replace with symbols this time you know the rules and the logic behind it are that it's removing all the vowels but we're not um, so that's how it's similar and how is it different well it hasn't given us a dictionary and there's no way to um, revert the data back to what it originally was so we have Something that we can possibly read, um, but if, if I give you that sec, if I give you the sentence in that second box, you probably wouldn't be able to decrypt it or, de or read it, decompress it, read it. If I didn't give you the first box there, that showed the full um, the full text. So go ahead and you can have a play with this. Um, see if it actually does what it's supposed to do. So um, the idea is it's supposed to take out all the vowels. So let's get rid of this one here. So say hello world. 
Okay, and it looks like it's removed. Oh no, it has it's, it's kept special characters. Um, today is Sunday, and it is raining. Raining. Okay, so see, it tells us what our compression ratio is. So, um, compression rate's pretty good, eighteen point seven percent. If we just remove all the vowels, but you know, it's 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 not very for text. This kind of compression is not very good, not very useful. Okay, so today's activity. Navigate over to code.org, uh, lesson 10, and go to level 2. So back in Google Classroom here, I want to click on this link. And we want to go to lesson 2. So, under, uh, sorry, um, level 2. So, lesson 10, lossy compression, level 2. So that's where we are. So what does it want us to do? Lossy compression widget V1 level 2. So what do you notice about the quality of the image when you compress it? And what do you notice about the compressed file size? So let's shoot on over here. Let's go and click run. And we have a school bus. And we have a slider here. So our original image is two, well, 201,600 bytes. So that is 201 kilobytes. So 201,000 bytes, 201 kilobytes. If we drag a slider over here, let's go with a sample size of two. You know, it's, um, we managed to compress that, bring it down pretty well. It's now only 51 meg instead of 200. So that's about a, what, a quarter of the size. Um, sample size 2 and you can still see it's a school bus you can pretty much make out it's a school bus at the top there um, let's drag it along a little further uh, when we do sample level 3 well now oh, we know it's a school bus because we know what a school bus looks like but we don't know it's a school bus up here and the image quality is pretty terrible you know it, it's you wouldn't want to put this on a website because it's just bad it's bad image quality you wouldn't want to use this for anything Let's drag a slider all the way over to the right. So this is a sample size 20. You have no idea what that is. That, that could be a, a bunch of Lego bricks. I mean, there's, there's, there's not nothing there that would distinguish it as a school bus. Look at the size of 561 bytes. So very small, but useless image. Let's see what 10. No. I don't think you'd know that that was a school bus if you didn't know it was a school bus. If I didn't tell you that was a school bus, you wouldn't know. Um, ah, it's starting to resemble a school bus now. I would say that... I would say level 2 is probably the most useful. If we needed to compress this image from the 200k down to the 50k, um, I think that's you you wouldn't want to go past level two. Anything past level two and that image becomes useless. Now two hundred and one K, two hundred two hundred one thousand six hundred bytes, so two hundred and one kilobytes approximately. That is a tiny file size. You know, back in the days where the internet involved using a dial up phone and people had America online accounts and uh, you were using um, uh, twenty eight point eight kilobit modems or fifty six point six kilobit modems. You know, 200 bytes, 200 megabytes, that's 200 kilobytes even. 200 kilobytes would be a big deal. The the length of time it would take to transmit that image across the, the internet at that speed is, is considerable. Um, but as it is now, we can deal with 200 megabyte images. So, and it's, it's no big deal. To, to, sorry, 200 kilobytes, 200 kilobytes, 200 megabytes would be a big deal. That's a big image, 200 kilobytes. Yeah, not a very big image. So what do we notice about the quality of the image when you compress it? Well, the image quality goes down quite significantly. And what do you notice about the compressed file size? Well, when we went from level, uh, from original to sample size, uh, was it sample size one to sample size two, well, it went down to about a quarter of the size. So it was quite a good amount of compression I were able to do on images there. Um, but notice, we have lost data from it. We could not, 
we couldn't take it from this image back to the original image. It's one-way compression. We couldn't decompress it back to the original image because it's lossy compression. We are losing data as part of that compression. Okay, so lossy compression widget versus two, widget version two level three. So let's go to uh, this one, level three. Okay. So run the program. Just click on the orange run button. Did I not? Is this not the one we just ran? Oh, choose your own image here. Here we go. So uh, choose your own image to explore with the app. Uh, link it, link to it by clicking new image and pasting it to the image URL. Okay, let's do this. All right, let's go and I know I didn't spell that right. That's it. That's it. I thought you had a high school. Right. Let's go out to this random school's website. I just happened to pick here, and let's get this image. So let's do a save image as desktop. Now, is it going to let us upload a PNG? So PNG is an image type. Uh, let's see. Oh, into your, let me try this actually. So open a new tab. No, open image a new tab is what I want. Uh, open image a new tab, there we go. Let's see if this works, shall we? So new image, it's my image URL, let's see if it works. It did, it worked, awesome. All right, so we have uh, Lafayette High School Crest. Um, okay, so find the highest compression rate possible where your image is still recognizable. So, yeah, no, not recognizable. So I'm using the cursor, left cursor button here on the, uh, you know, the, the left arrow key on the keyboard and uh, let's take it to where it's still recognizable I mean I would say since you guys know what your school crest looks like I would say to some extent you would probably recognize it in this image this image Definitely these better, higher quality images. Um, yeah, you can kind of almost make out the text there. Um, yeah, again, I mean, really, you don't want to go past sample size to. Yeah, so go ahead and find an image on the internet and you can if you want to use Google images you can do that so let's do a search for um, Mr. Blobby so Mr. Blobby is this guy here he featured in a uh, English single I will let you go and Google that in your own time as to what that song actually sounds like and yeah, I'll leave that for your homework Go for your homework. We need to uh, go to um, uh, YouTube and find the Mr. Blobby song and listen to it. But here is a Mr. Blobby image. And we can, when you find an image you want, if you right click on it, you can say um, open open image in new tab. And it opens it in a new tab. You can copy the link and you can paste it into here. So it looks like it does support quite a few different kinds of images. So here's Mr. Blobby in sample size five. 
There we go. So you go go and uh, find an image, play with the compression here, and then come back once you've had a chance to have a play with that. Okay, so you've had a chance to play with the image compression now. So activity. So we are trying to use this image. So we have an image here on the PowerPoint slide. So we're trying to use this image for a particular purpose and we need to decide how much lossy compression we want to use. So just a street image here, people walking down the street, probably a bunch of tourists since they have, seems pretty much every, or, or a photography convention, seems everybody has a camera in their hand. Um, so scenario one, you are sending this as a text message to a friend, but you've almost run out of data on your phone plan. So looking at the four options we have here, so number one, compression. So there's no compression, that's the original image. Number two, it's got a small amount of compression. Number three is a medium amount of compression. Number four is a large amount of compression. Um, now, remember the sample size when we switched from one to two that cut down the image to about a quarter of the size and since it's a text message it's going to a phone the phone may or may not have very good display anyway so even if you sent a full compressed image the full i'm sorry the full uncompressed image you may not be able to see it particularly great in the phone anyway um you know, it's not an image that you're saving. It's not an image of family or friends that you want to get saved. It's just a street image. Um, it doesn't really say what the purpose is other than you send in a text to your friend. I would suggest, and, and this is just me, you go ahead and think about it for yourself as well, but I would suggest that we want to use the large amount of compression. And the reason for that is it doesn't seem to be an important image. You know, the, the fact that um, it isn't really being used for anything implies that the image quality really doesn't matter too much. So my vote would be this one here, large amount of compression. And you can still see it's a street scene. Um, if you were to reduce the size of that image and size, so like the, um, you know, the X and the Y uh, width and the height of the image, if you reduced it, in size the quality would actually look a little better so it may actually it may actually look okay on a computer screen oh sorry on a cell phone screen so scenario two you are a crime scene photographer and this image is part of a crime scene photo well that's kind of important you're a crime scene photographer you're documenting a uh, scene of scene of crime and this is going to be stored in a file somewhere and perhaps referenced um, in court or by police. Um, looking, it certainly wouldn't want to use a large amount of compression because you're using the detail here. You can't see people's faces. I mean, we know from image one that this guy's holding the phone in his hand, but you can't see from image four that he's doing that. And there's no way you could count the number of people down in image four. So I think we'd have to rule out image four as being the is the one that we want to use um image three i'd still say that that's not good enough for a crime scene photographer uh, for a crime scene photograph i would say image two is possible uh my preference would be for image one just because the detail that, it, that would be required in a crime scene photograph you could probably get away with level two uh, option two but I would say option one would be the preferred for a crime scene photo and as far as storage it goes we don't really matter it doesn't really matter how much storage is used you know we, we, there's no limits on um, the hard disk on the computer where the files are going to reside um, or if the image is going to be printed so the image may be printed printed out uh, onto paper and saved in a in a physical archive somewhere if you printed out the one on number four it would be useless so my my often my option would be number one possibly number two so scenario three so image is part of a satellite imaging assignment for the military 
being used for intelligence gathering? Well, uh, I would say similar to the first, uh, the previous op previous option with the uh, crime scene. Uh, I would say uh, I'd, I'd opt for number one again here. Uh, no compression now. Um, the satellite image assignment for the military being used for intelligence gathering. I mean, that seems pretty important that you would want as much detail in these pictures as absolutely possible. Um, you know, if, if we zoom in, we might be able to write the image on the left here, the top left, you might be able to recognize people's faces here. We might be able to zoom in and identify who they are. But on the right hand, you know, even on option two here, if we zoomed in there, we couldn't identify these people. You know, we've lost so much um, clarity of the image, so much quality of the image. Uh, we can see that they're people, but we wouldn't be able to um, identify who they are. So I'd say for scenario three, absolutely, definitely the uh, first option here. So no compression. And then scenario four, you're a social media manager posting this to an Instagram story for an event happening right now. Well, if you post it to an Instagram story, it's really for illustrative purposes. Um, it would look pretty bad if you used fourth option here with a large amount of compression, but you certainly wouldn't want to use the full um, uh, the full size image. <clears throat> I would probably say that because it is just for illustrative purposes, there's some event happening right now. Um, probably, probably option three. I mean, depending on how good you really wanted the image to appear you could probably go for option two but i certainly wouldn't go for option one um it's not you know, the the amount of quality in the image for an instagram story for showing an event that's happening right now it's it's not needed so you know my vote there would be either number two or probably number three possibly number two but probably number three All right, scenario five, this will be part of a collage where 100 copies will be stitched together to make a larger image. Well, you've probably seen those collages where they stitch lots of images together um, to make a, a larger image. Those images are reduced in size anyway, and you, it's not really looking for the quality of the image. It's looking for an overall and color consistency of the entire image throughout. So we could easily get away with number four for this. So if you, you know, you can look at number four image here and kind of be squint at it a little bit, just, just put it slightly out of focus. And what do we got? We've got, you can see yellow here, you can see white, we can see kind of darker colors in the middle here. So, you know, this is possibly something um, where you could use it in a larger image if you wanted to show a uh, darker colored rectangle in the middle here. So we can have like a horizontal rectangle in the center of the screen here. And we could maybe use this image as part of that. So I would say for scenario five, um, we don't need, we don't want, we don't want the compression of the clarity of the original image. We really don't want it because we're gonna make this image smaller anyway. And it's gonna be part of the, we're using the colors from it to make a larger image. Number two and number three still is too much detail in there. So I would say for scenario five, we'd want to be doing number four. So large amount of compression. And remember, you're going to be stitching these with 100 copies. So if you used 100 images of the similar size, you would want to have the image quality lower. So you've got a lower file size because you're going to have it. It's going to be 100 times that with all of the other pictures that are um, in the collage. So scenario five, I, I would vote for number four here. Scenario six, you are a professional photographer submitting to a design do, to, uh, to a design competition where your submission will be carefully judged for color and composition. So here's the key, carefully judged for color and composition. If you're being carefully judged for color or composition, it has to be item number one. You know, for number two, for three, four, you're losing color, you're losing composition, you're using you're losing the clarity of the image. If you're being judged based on color and composition, then you would 
you would want to go for number one. At least my vote would be number one. So wrap up. Prompt, when is it a good idea to use lossless compression? So if we want to use lossless compression, so lossless compression is where none of the data is lost. Uh, so lossless comp compression, if we go back to our text, let's go back to our text here. Text is lost, would be lossless compression. If it's something that you want to be able to show what the original file was after it's compressed and then decompressed, then you have to have lossy compression. Um, I'm sorry, loss, lossless compression. Otherwise, if you use lossy compression, you end up with sentences that don't make sense or numbers that don't make sense or text that you can't read. So when is a good idea to use lossless compression? So any kind of compression where it's important to be able to decompress the file back to the absolute original file down to the byte, down to the bit even. Um, so text-based um, is, is a perfect example of when you'd want to use lossless compression. So when you should when should you use lossy compression? So lossy compression is used a lot for analog data, audio uh, data, video data, images, and we saw in today's lesson what we can or how we can apply lossy compression to an image. So when we apply lossy type compression, we lose data within the image. We we can lose image clarity but uh, we can lose audio clarity as well. But depending upon the level of compression, it could be unnoticeable. So if we go back to these four images here, you know, in most cases, unless you really needed absolute best clarity possible, small amount of compression works well. I mean, I would, that's, a, that's a pretty good image for use uh, on just a, a general day-to-day -day basis. I mean, there's nothing. If I just wanted to post this on my Facebook page and say, here, here's a street. I was in the, the street yesterday. You know, Or here's a bunch of people coming back from a photographer's convention. You know, that would be that would be an ideal um, amount of compression there. Um, too much lossy compression, and you'll end up with an image that you can't see. Uh, too much lossy compression on a yeah, audio file on a mp3 or whatever sounds that you ever ever uh, file format you download from amazon or itunes uh, too much lossy compression on that is going to make your audio sound pretty poor um, but you wouldn't want to you, you can lose a little bit of file clarity there uh, and then what are the important important factors in making that decision well what is it being used for is it um, an image that's being used for military intelligence? Then you don't want to lose any data. If it's going on somebody's uh, Instagram page, um, then you can lose some data. If it's uh, for audio, if it's just somebody talking, then you can lose some of that data. If it's uh, I don't know, a 25 piece orchestra um, playing Mozart or something, then you would not want to you, you could lose a little bit of clarity from it um but you wouldn't want to lose too much so you, you might want to use a little bit of lossy compression you wouldn't want to use lossless compression because the file type would be huge it would be way too big uh you would use lossy compression but you would put just a little bit of compression on there so lossy compression a process for reducing the number of bits needed to represent something in which some information is lost or thrown away. So lossy means lost. Lost, oops, lost is lossy. The process is not reversible. So if you if you go and take a, a family picture and you save that off and then you convert that picture into a, uh, a you compress the picture using lossy compression, you're never gonna be able to rebuild that original image. So the process is not reversible.
Okay, that's everything for today. Lossy compression. Uh, hopefully you guys uh, understood all that and, and can see the differences between lossy compression and lossless compression. And I will speak to you again in our next lesson. Alrighty, thank you all.